you've just gone to your medical doctor for your yearly physical and at that physical they ran blood work. On the blood work, your cholesterol and your LDL are lab high and now your doctor is recommending a statin drug. And your question is, should I take the statin drug? Do I need it? I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. Now, in order to answer that question, there's a lot more information that needs to be known, but the first thing you need to understand is that cholesterol levels are the canary in the coal mine. They are not the cause. So, mainstream media would have you believe if you have high cholesterol, then your risk of death from cardiovascular disease and stroke goes up in step with your rising cholesterol levels. Well, research shows that it's not actually a linear association, but it's a U-shaped curve, meaning the higher your cholesterol levels go above a certain point, the higher your risk of death, but also the lower your cholesterol levels go below a certain point, the higher your risk of death. Especially in postmenopausal women, um, the lower your cholesterol goes, the higher your risk of death from site-specific cancers, and the higher your risk of type 2 diabetes. So we don't want our cholesterol too low, and Kind of the, the too low point is 150 and below. But according to the research, the sweet spot of total cholesterol is about 232. So on every lab value or lab range in America, 232 will be lab high. So we have to ask the question, why do the typical lab ranges say healthy total cholesterol is 200 or less? Well, you have to dig into the economics and see that statin drugs are the highest selling class of drugs of all time and realize that money drives everything so it's not always about what's healthy or right unfortunately in our economy it's more about money but that's a video for another day we want to answer should you take the statin drug well we have to understand the underlying physiology first of all there is not good and bad cholesterol there is essential cholesterol HDL or the good cholesterol, that's essential. LDL or the bad cholesterol is also essential. LDL is considered bad because LDL, low density lipoprotein, takes cholesterol from the liver and takes it out into the periphery, so in the blood vessels, in the tissues. HDL is considered good because it takes cholesterol from the blood vessels or from the tissues back to the liver, okay? so. The, the, the mechanism that controls all of this, or much of this, is called the LDL receptor, and the LDL receptor is in the liver. So the liver is monitoring cholesterol levels, monitoring physiology, taking a whole bunch of inputs from other systems to determine, hey, do we need to raise LDL out in the tissues, or do we need to pull LDL into the liver and lower tissue levels? So that takes us back to LDL and total cholesterol and your lipid panel being more of a canary in the coal mine, being a, a secondary indicator of things going wrong than being the primary cause, okay? So this is why after 20, 25 years of, of statin drug use, um, the, the, the overall occurrence of death from heart attack and stroke hasn't, hasn't decreased with statin drug use but overall cholesterol levels have. So the drugs are lowering cholesterol levels, but death from heart disease and stroke isn't lowering. So again, is cholesterol the cause or a secondary effect of a deeper cause? I would say it's a deeper cause and we'll see why here. So what determines or what is the LDL receptor monitoring out in the periphery to determine cholesterol levels? And how do those things that it's monitoring impact LDL receptor function? So let's go through a list. First of all, thyroid. Thyroid function is one thing that impacts LDL receptor function. So the thyroid, when functioning properly, increases LDL receptor function or increases the LDL receptors calling LDL out of circulation, out of vessels, out of the tissues, back to the liver. So it improves levels. Insulin, proper insulin response. So proper insulin response will lead to healthy LDL receptor function and decreased or optimal healthy cholesterol levels. 
So insulin is involved in blood sugar, so a big time contributor to good cholesterol levels or poor cholesterol levels is your nutritional or are your nutritional choices, your blood sugar regulation. Insulin also will promote healthy thyroid function. So if your insulin is off, you have potential for your cholesterol levels to be off and your thyroid function to be off. Okay? Um, if we go down here, inflammation Inflammation negatively affects the LDL receptor. So if you are inflamed from uh, any reason, and especially if it's chronic inflammation, this inhibits LDL receptor function and will lead to higher levels of systemic cholesterol, systemic LDL levels. Infection. Chronic infection also changes LDL receptor function because um, basically chronic infection will increase systemic cholesterol levels and LDL levels because those things, total cholesterol and LDL, are used to activate the immune system against infection or to alert it and let it know that you are infected. So if we took, if your LDL and total cholesterol are lab high on your test with your doctor because you're chronically infected, and then you take a statin drug because you just want to treat the, the number on the paper. Oh, those are too high, knock them down. Well, the statin drug could worsen your infection because it's, it's decreasing the physiologic mechanism that's telling the immune system that you're infected and to mobilize against that infection. So again, we want to know why these are high. We don't want to just treat a number on a paper, okay? So infection will inhibit LDL receptor function. Stress. Stress will inhibit LDL receptor function. So that could be stress from poor diet, which will probably combo with insulin being poor and thyroid being poor, so that'd be a triple whammy on cholesterol levels. Could be poor stress from physical trauma or a sedentary lifestyle. It could be stress from a poor relationship. It could be stress from sleep deprivation or insomnia. It could be stress from environmental toxins. So stress, regardless of the cause, will negatively impact LDL receptor function and contribute to high total cholesterol, high LDL levels. Well, guess what? Infection and inflammation are big time stressors. Okay, so if you're chronically inflamed from autoimmunity or from tissue damage or from infection, then that's gonna drive stress and increase cholesterol levels. So, as you can see here, um, one other thing, stress, inhibits thyroid function and stress inhibits insulin response and, and blood sugar function. So you have this interconnected web and you can see that it's complicated and it's a lot easier for a doctor to say, hey, your total cholesterol and LDL are high, you need a statin. Uh, they can do that a lot faster in the average 12 minute or less visit than they can work through this web on each specific patient or person and say, hey, here's where things have gone wrong, here's what you need to do. But I've always found what's interesting is on the statin drug commercials, if you listen to them, they'll say, you know, heart disease, stroke, blah, 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 and then they'll whisper, if, if, diet if intensive dietary change and exercise aren't enough, use a statin. But what's also interesting is there's now commercials saying, if the maximum dose statin isn't enough, here's another drug to take with it, and it's shown to lower cholesterol. No, your own commercials are admitting that the statins don't work in many situations. What works is addressing the cause or causes. And we've laid out some of them here on the board for you today. It takes a thinker. It takes someone who understands global physiology, not just someone who's a specialist in one little piece of the pie. So we need to understand each individual that's in front of us. We need to do deeper detective work to determine, hey, is thyroid a piece? Is insulin a piece? Is stress a piece? Are you infected? Are you chronically inflamed? Do you have autoimmune disease? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to determine the answer to should I take the statin drug or not. If you are paying attention to this video, you know that probably first you need to determine the cause and address that cause. If you address that cause, it's likely that LDL receptor function is restored. Your overall health is restored depending on which cause 
or causes it was, and you retest and hey, now cholesterol levels are within the ranges that are healthy and we don't need the statin drug any further or never did. So I'm Dr. John Bartimus of Functional Medicine Charlotte. Functional Medicine is what I do. This is the detective work that we do to help determine your specific puzzle and your web that allows us to know, hey, what are the specific inputs that we need to tweak to normalize lab values, normalize physiology, optimize your health and quality of life.